So Carmen Tapio worked in call centers for 30 years. And in 2018, she decided she wanted to buy a call center. She was working in a little call center in North Omaha with 40 people. Now there were some challenges to this though. First, the call center didn't make money. Second, it didn't have any collateral to get a bank loan. Third, Carmen didn't have any money to buy the company. Fourth, her business plan was to grow aggressively, but nobody thought there was a workforce in North Omaha to do that. And fifth, Carmen had never been an entrepreneur before. She'd never owned a business. So she had to bring a lot of vision and energy to convince people, like us, to give her the money. But convince us she did, and what a great decision that was. When we, when we see what she has done with this company now, we are able to see an amazing transformation. She has built a company that went from 40 people to 300 people, bringing in an amazing amount of work. And she's done that by big, giving people in that community the hope that they can do something different. Right? There was no transportation, people couldn't get to work, so she has buses, pride and joy, that go pick you up at your house. She has a lending program where they give people money to buy their first car, to buy their first home. She has an apprenticeship program to teach people the skills they need. She sends people to college. She has made a transition in this community, and she's been giving people a second chance. One of her senior executive members of the leadership team used to run a gang in the neighborhood where they're working now. And Carmen's impact, though, has gone way beyond North End Teleservices. She's now the chair of the Omaha Chamber of Commerce. She's on the Federal Reserve Board of Kansas City. And right now, she's working on the next project, which is to redevelop a blighted block in the urban center of North Omaha, where we're hopefully going to help her put in retail, low-income housing, and an office for hundreds of employees of North End Teleservices to drive that energy and keep it in that community. I still remember meeting Neil Lane for the first time. Driving down a small road, two-lane road in rural Ohio, trees everywhere. All the trees we saw in the earlier presentation, they were all right here. And all of a sudden, you're going down the road, and there's a little building carved out with about 20 parking spaces and a few cars. No town, no people, nothing else around. So I go inside, I meet Neil at Global Cooling, and I say, Neil, why are you here? And he said, because people in this community need good jobs, and we're going to bring them here. It's pretty impressive, pretty interesting. Their technology was a new 50% less energy usage way to make a, a freezer, a very cold freezer for research labs at Stanford and at Berkeley and other places where they needed biotech research. So we met Neil, we got excited, we got involved in the project. We invested and with all small businesses, like many, many of them, almost immediately everything started to go wrong. The handles fell off the doors. The next generation, the product wasn't done. It didn't work. They tried to outsource the manufacturing. The new manufacturer couldn't make it. The, the freezers were breaking. They weren't staying cold. Everything went sideways. It had worked really well before we got involved, but then everything went sideways. Along comes the pandemic. That seems like it could be a disaster, but it turns the other way for this company. Moderna, Pfizer make these two great vaccines, but one of them needs to be at negative 30 degrees and one at negative 80. The only freezer with the capabilities, because of its environmental friendliness, its smaller size and lower energy, that could do both, was Global Cooling's freezer. Every Walmart, every CVS, every Walgreens in America needed one of these so that they could take the vaccines and make them available to people. Company goes up, 300 people. It's a rocket ship. We're trying everything we can to keep them making these as fast as people need them. We got another one of our portfolio companies in Ohio involved making wire harnesses for them, and the whole community rallied behind Global Cooling. They sold it to a big public biotech. It was a huge success. People are at work, money was made, and everybody in America got their vaccines a lot faster than they would have without Global Cooling. And there's a picture of them. So Tim Hayden was a graduate student at James Madison University in Harrisonburg, Virginia, in the rural Shenandoah Valley. One day, a farmer comes to the school and says, is anybody here that could help me with a business plan? Because I don't know what to do with this little farm. My partner died, and I'm just at a loss. So Tim made it a class project for that semester and helped him write a business plan. Fast forward a year, Tim was the CEO of this farm. It's a tiny little farm with a few acres and a small greenhouse growing herbs. It was in 1992. 
And over time, they built more greenhouses, they, built, they got more land, they created a distribution business, and they bought herbs from other people. They grew to be a dominant player in the local community. They had a big, big presence there. Then investors like us got involved, and we took it nationwide, and they became the biggest herb supplier to the whole country. And they kept innovating in their greenhouses. They started putting lights in the greenhouse so they could grow even when it wasn't beautiful outside and they weren't, you weren't able to see the sun on those days. Got more and more interesting. They developed their own organic nitrogen, which used a ton less energy and replaced all the fossil fuels that are burned to create nitrogen outdoors. And all of a sudden, the technology got better and they started to be able to grow in the dark. And they started to create vertical farms. And today, their, their general process is that they have six-layer vertical farms, millions of plants growing inside each facility that they build. These indoor farms are now using 95% less water, 95% less land. They're using less energy. They're climate resistant because they can grow year-round no matter what happens outside. They are able to do this locally in your local area and bring organic food to your local markets. But what's crazy about what Tim and his team at Solely Organic have done is they're doing it for less money than you can grow in the field. So they're able to bring organic produce to the masses. Walmart is their biggest customer. They're doing $150 million of sales. They have 1,000 people working at the company. And it's all driven by an entrepreneur with a vision for his local community that was able to execute and deal with all that change. That's what we see at Advantage. At the end of the day, the secret to every successful business is in the leadership and the people on that leadership team. People are way more important than the business plan, and entrepreneurs are the ones that produce the impact that we're all aiming to achieve.